was watching one video by uh, Paul Adams, um, a fisherman and uh, a guy who makes these uh, really great fishing lures. He's got his uh, YouTube channel and uh, he had this one, mackerel fishing with homemade uh, feather rigs. And uh, my God, he just got, he just nailed it. Beautiful, beautiful scenery. He was fishing on the side of the, uh, the on, on by the side of the ocean. And uh, wow, you, um, I'm going to put a link to it below so you can see where I got the inspiration for this painting here. Great video. You gotta, you gotta watch that. So, uh, anyways, without further ado, some of the colors that I got set up here. Still have some of the colors from the other day. A uh, little bit of the green, a little bit, of, and uh, some of my gesso here. I got some yellow oxide, cadmium yellow, orange, and crimson red, and some cerulean blue. Now, uh, with these colors here and a, just a regular piece of canvas, I'm going to start out as I usually do with a large brush to set the color tone. This basically what I'm doing here is a wash. Watery color, that's why I call it a wash. Now if you see here, if I stop my brush, I don't know if you can see that, but if I stop my brush halfway through and I lift up, you get a streak there. So if you don't want that, you continue going right across the canvas. Yeah. So this sets the tone. So now for the drawing, I want to have a low horizon. So basically just saying this is uh, where the beach is going to be. I'm going very pale for, for starters here. This might be trees in the background. Alright, so if I divide my image into thirds, this is going to be where I'm going to put my fisherman. His head is going to be on the top third corner. So one, one, one third, two thirds. So right here, and then this third, and this third. This is where I want to put his head. And then the body. Because the, water, the paint is a little transparent, I'm able to uh, use some thicker paint to make some suggest some shadows a little bit. On the horizon, I'm going to put another shore. It's coming out. I'm going to have it come out a little further than it does. video. Sometimes when I draw something that's behind another thing, I might go all the way through and just paint it, just to make sure that it lines up. Then I can always come back and redefine my, my brush strokes. Some suggestion of some waves and some sands. Now I want to measure my horizon here because this has to be same. Right through. So now I'm going to mix a little bit of sunny sky color. I'm going to take some of that orange and mix it in with that purplish brownish color. yellow. I haven't decided yet exactly the position of the sun. It's going to affect the where the colors start to change, but I'm not at that point just yet. Start laying on some dull colors. And um, <clears throat> as I progress, I'll be painting lighter and brighter and more intense colors. So the water 
course, we'll reflect a lot of that sky color. So there's not a sky color and a water color. There's just basically the color of the environment is going to reflect on the water. So whatever you have in your sky, in your environment, and your water is going to have those exact same colors. So when you paint a scenery with water in it, you paint both at the same time, sky and water. Now it's okay if the background colors overlap a little bit on my subject, because before the end I'm going to redefine that subject. I'm going to change his pose a little bit, so if the, instead of having to repaint the background around him, which matching colors becomes very difficult, so if I apply some paint on this side, carry it through on the other. So there's continuation. So right now I want to do some little squiggly little smudges and stuff. So I'm picking up some thicker, wetter paint on the tip of the brush. And I can lay it on sideways and just let the brush do some funny little things here. So I want some waves, it's smaller and smaller and more insignificant as they go their way in the distance. So there we are. Brush them in with some really rough brush strokes. Nothing special there at all. Streaks, those waves, just smudges. Doesn't look like much yet, but that's that's how you uh, get things started. I'm mixing a little bit of yellowish color. So the yellow is going to contrast very strongly with the purple. And <clears throat> so basically I'm not going to paint the sun right away. I'm going to instead paint the sky and the background glow the sun's going to inflict on. Now I've got that color in the sky. It needs to be in the water as well. So it'll be start here. I want to make the sky too light behind the sun, so that when I paint the sun, it still has the illusion of brightness. You can only get light. You can only get light really when you have uh, dark next to it in order to make it show up. Um, So now I'm pretty much uh, finished with the sky, I think, for now. See if there's anything more I want to do with it later. But for now, I think I'm going to switch over to drawing my subject. Yay, I've been waiting for this all since the beginning. So right now I mix some blue and some orange to make a nice uh, brownish color. Now in order to keep my hand steady, I don't want to lay my hand on the canvas because I might uh, put it first of all put a dent in the canvas and uh, and I have a tendency to be a little bit messy in my fingers and stuff so I don't want to make a mess. So I use um, a stick and I rest my hand on that. So. in the uh, shadows. I'm going to come back now and put another layer of that blue. On 
the shadow side. Alright, liner brush. Alright, I want to start from the bottom, curve my way out. So, let's put it upside down. See how that looks. Not bad. I want to have one leg more in front of the other as compared to the original painting. So I'm going to put a highlight between the calf of the back leg and the shin of the front leg. A little witch. So that negative space there between the two areas. Actually, I'm going to take my liner brush to really put in some details there because it's a tight little corner. Now I'm going to take some of that highlight color and I'm going to run it down to the, on the, along the back of the back leg. I like the shoe. And the same thing on the back of this leg. And I'm going to put a little bump, show the angle of my bone. And I'm going to leave a little gap and put a little comma. Same here. That's the back of the shoe catching some light. Now I don't know how much detail was on the original video. But my screen capture was not all that great, so I don't see much detail here. I have to use my imagination a bit. My imagination, I've got lots of that. This is where years of uh, drawing the nude model comes in handy. You get a feel for anatomy and when you have to improvise, you pull it off. Like for instance here I was able to change the pose a little bit so that it has a little bit more um, visual interest. Not that, in, not that the scene like the very much visual interest is just sometimes you want a little bit emphasize one thing or another. And I wanted to have the legs a little bit braced apart so that it emphasized the fact that he's pulling hard to bring in this fish. With the two feet together, you don't look like you're putting, applying that as much pressure. So, just a little trick there to convince the viewer that they're looking at a guy. Applying some pressure. And the fact that his upper body, I accentuated the bend, the curve. On the original pose, he's standing a little bit more straight, leaning slightly backwards, but here I, I accentuated that a little bit more just to give you more the idea that he's like, he's really like uh, pulling, right? Now, the sun. I'll dip my brush in a little dab of yellow. Pick up some pure white. 